Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Savant Report podcast. My name is Jordan Weirs. I'm your host. And today we're going to talk about a really, really important topic, the question of whether Bitcoin has bottomed, do we have further to go, and what I think is deep value for accumulating Bitcoin for a long-term play. Let's jump right into it. Okay, first and foremost, I'm going to give a couple of disclaimers before we start. This is not financial advice, and everybody's situation is very different, okay? Uh, What I'm going to talk about today is my own personal view on accumulating, owning, and uh, investing in Bitcoin. What I am going to say is that everybody's individual set of circumstances trumps anybody's view or advice, okay? You need to think about your net worth, your portfolio, your risk tolerance, your income, your liabilities, your career and the stability thereof. There's lots of factors, okay? So what I'm gonna talk about today in terms of my view and what I think is deep value for Bitcoin and accumulating Bitcoin for a deep value investment is simply my opinion and my opinion only. So make the best decision that you can for yourself. Okay, um, along with that disclosure, I want to talk about the people on crypto Twitter right now that are saying, you know, this is your last chance to buy Bitcoin in the 20,000s and you're never going to see sub 20,000 again. The bottom is in. Here, look at this amazing chart that I drew with an arrow that says this is the bottom. Um, You know, listen, just this morning, just earlier this morning, people were out there saying, you know, thank goodness that I bought Bitcoin under 20,000. You're never going to have a chance to buy Bitcoin under 20,000 ever again. Well, guess what? At the time of me recording this video, we're under 20,000, okay? Um, We've been under 20,000 for about the last hour or so, and we might peek our head back above it. Ultimately, though, I think that this is Uh, a time to be prudent. Capital preservation is your number one priority, not trying to time the bottoms. But I'm going to try and answer the question of whether or not the bottom is in. Okay, with that said, let's jump right into it. Uh, Let me make sure I'm recording, and I am. Okay, Uh, this is the weekly chart of Bitcoin. I have showed it to you several times before. This is a nasty uh, double top kind of a pattern. All right, and let me jump into what I'm looking at to try and tell me if this is the bottom. So first and foremost, I want to go way over here to the left into the uh, December 2017 time frame. And you can see that this cycle back in 2017 had massive volume, okay? There was a big spike in volume uh, leading up to the top and a big spike in volume leading down to the bottom, okay? And then you see a period of time in 2018 where basically the volume just kind of, you know, fades off a little bit, gets a little bit more normalized, and then boom, right there in late 2018, big wick, weekly wick down. I'm gonna zoom in on that a little bit for you. Boom, big weekly, where where is it? Where is it? Here we go. Uh, big weekly wick down, and you get this big spike in red volume there, okay? That was capitulation. And if we look over here to uh, May of 2019, again, you see increasing green volume. We get to kind of a peak. You see some, uh, again, increasing volume, which is capitulation of the upside, decreasing volume and decreasing price. And then boom, we see the capitulation in March of 2020, which was the COVID crash. And you see a big red weekly candle there. And then you also see a slightly uh, wicked green candle with big volume. That's capitulation. Okay, now we come over here to the Elon Musk, um, you know, uh, trade, right? You saw this big wick of green capitulation, big wick of red capitulation. And ultimately, for whatever reason, we continue to go make a new all-time high on lower volume. Okay, we, we did see this one weekly red big spike in volume here in May of 2021. Um, that was basically foreshadowed by by that day, uh, weekly candle and the weekly candle right before it, um, which you know came off the all-time highs and basically tapped into the uh, low 30s, very high 20s kind of a range. But since then, look, we really haven't seen 
much to do with volume up until the last couple of weeks. And in the last couple of weeks, we've seen, um, you know, a, a couple of very big red um, weeks of volume and, you know, coupled with very big red candles. Um, but this isn't capitulation volume. We're still kind of in a elevated, but not, I, I wouldn't say a consolidated or condensed period of, of um, you know, capitulation volume over a period of maybe four to six weeks. Uh, I haven't seen that. I'm not seeing that here. It's elevated volume. It's not capitulation volume, I don't think. Okay, so now let's look at the price action. You guys know by now from my last videos, this orange line here is the 200-week moving average. Uh, this yellow line is the 300-week moving average. If you go back in history, and of course we don't have all the data here to show you, unfortunately, we have tapped in extreme circumstances this 300-week moving average, this yellow line. We have hit it before in extreme circumstances, and unfortunately, I think we're probably going to hit it again. Uh, right now, that's about 16,600, and right now we're trading just under 2,000, about 19,000 and change. Uh, we just punched uh, 20,000 here as I'm recording this video. At the end of the day, you know, that moved down into the 16,000 range. You're talking about another 20%. It's not an insignificant move, but it's a move that honestly could come in, in, in a matter of hours or in a matter of days or in a matter of a couple weeks. Now, I've been saying for, geez, I don't know how long, I've been saying that we're due for a relief rally. And we are. I mean, this is this has been a brutal sell-off. But do I think that the bottom is in? Unfortunately, I don't think that the bottom is in. But I do think that 20,000-ish is a reasonable place for hodlers and long-term investors to either dollar cost average in if your basis is a little bit higher or if you want to add to your portfolio or if you're not a Bitcoin holder and you want to enter uh, a long position, you know, begin building a position in Bitcoin, this isn't an unreasonable place to begin accumulating. Uh, I will tell you, I bought another Bitcoin the other day at about 19,000. Uh, I think that ultimately, long term, that's going to be a great buy, but it was a very, very small buy in comparison to my overall portfolio. You know, I, I am not backing up the truck and going all in here, and I don't think anybody should. I believe that we are very likely going to get down into this 15, 16,000 range, probably tapping even a little bit lower than that 300 week moving average. And that, I believe, for me, is deep value Bitcoin. Now, why do I think that? Let me bring you to, um, to a couple of charts here. First is, this is uh, Ben Cowens uh, into the cryptoverse. He, he does an awesome Bitcoin logarithmic regression band model. Uh, he fits it to bubble and non-bubble data. And so you see these two red upper bands here that typically when price taps the, uh, the lower or upper red band, we've hit a high in price. That effectively happened back here in um, May of 2021. And then... Believe it or not, the model had actually already uh, improved enough from a price perspective that we didn't hit that red line in November of 2021, which was Bitcoin's all-time high up to this point in time at 69000 Now, these green bands are areas of, for lack of a better term, support. Okay, these are logarithmic regression lines. Now, the bottom band here, you can see if you go all the way back to where this chart started in 2010, you can see that we certainly were in that lower green band area at that point in time. Now, uh, in the bear market following uh, 2011, we actually tapped about the middle line. Then you can see here in the bear market between 2015 and and uh, well, actually, we should say between 2014 and 2017, where things got wild, you know, we kind of hovered around this mid uh, green band and then proceeded to hit a new all time high and boom, bear market again. And we tapped into the mid band. Uh, we had a little bit of a pump. And then in the COVID crash, 
we got back down to that lower green band. Okay, where are we today? We're right around that mid green band. That is a reasonable place to accumulate Bitcoin, not as a trade, but as a place of long-term intrinsic value. This typically tends to be a good place to buy. Uh, but that's not to say that it can't go lower. Let's look at a couple of charts that are rather ominous, okay? This is an Ethereum chart posted by Peter Brandt. Uh, this is a typical head and shoulders pattern. Uh, he basically says that after we break the neckline, which we've done, that he has a target on Ethereum of about $300. Now, if Ethereum gets to $300 right now, we're trading sub 1100 but if we get to $300, I guarantee you that Bitcoin is going to be in, in pretty bad shape, right? Probably not to the same percentage degree, but Bitcoin is certainly not going to be at 20000 if Ethereum hits 300 So uh, I'm kind of using this as a correlated metric. Now, I, I will tell you, even Peter Brandt says he's skeptical of those targets, right? Uh, a $300 Ethereum price would be a really big, like 95% retracement from its all-time high. Uh, that can happen, and that does happen in technology, and it does happen in some of these super cycles, just like it happened in the dot-com bubble, right? Uh, Amazon uh, took a bath. I think Amazon was down 90 or 95% in that period of time. So uh, so this is a rather ominous chart here from Peter Brandt. And if uh, Ethereum even makes it down to 500 I think Bitcoin very easily is going to be in that 14, 15,000 neighborhood. Okay, here's another one from Peter Brandt. Uh, this chart shows the double top, shows us breaking this uh, support line here. We'll call it a neckline for lack of a better term. It's not a head and shoulders, but call it a neckline just for, for clean terminology. Down here um, at 13,970, he drew a line. Uh, you know, is it possible we get there? Yeah. He wrote out here 13,118. Could we get to 13,000? Unfortunately, I think the answer is yes. It is very, very possible. Like if you look at the magnitude of this chart, just, just look at it with an unbiased set of eyes. It's pretty easy to say, look, you know, Bitcoin has had this massive run up. These are monthly bars. And is it possible that we come back down into an area of consolidation where Bitcoin had traded before? And I think the answer is pretty clear. Like, yes, we can. How long can we stay there? We could stay there for 12 months, 18 months. We could even stay there for 24 months. I know everyone's talking about the four-year cycles and the halvings and all that kind of stuff. Yes, I think that plays a role in things. But in a really bad macroeconomic set of circumstances, you know, I think Bitcoin is going to get absolutely clobbered. Well, it has been absolutely clobbered. We were at 69,000. We're now trading sub 20,000, right? That's clobbered in my book. Uh, but can we go down another five, six, seven, eight thousand bucks? Yes, I think that is absolutely possible. If that were to happen, okay, if we were to get down into that 10, 12, 14,000 range, my personal belief is that is deep value for Bitcoin. I think the 300 week moving average for Bitcoin is deep value, but that doesn't mean that value can't get even deeper, that price can't sink even deeper into value territory. Let me show you a little bit of the reasons why I think this is all coming to pass, okay? This is a tweet from uh, Hoddle Magoo, very, very sharp guy, super smart. I follow him on Twitter. I listen to what he has to say. He's got a great big picture, 10,000 foot view kind of a mentality. Consumer confidence low, consumer savings in the gutter, consumer credit exploding, high inflation, oil and gas prices causing havoc, food prices unbearable, Fed raising rates fast, Fed starting quantitative tightening, growth slowing drastically, supply chain constraints, and negative real wage growth. Um, yeah, thanks for summing that up so concisely, Hoddle Magoo. Listen, this is a tough situation uh, from a macro perspective. And so I think that we're in a potentially a generational period of time, an opportunity to acquire Bitcoin and build a position in Bitcoin over time that will pay massive dividends in the future. I think that Bitcoin is by far the most superior asset uh, within the crypto or blockchain space. 
I know a lot of maxis are going to hate me even putting those words together in the same sentence, but that's how I think about it, and that's my view on it. Uh, I really think that long-term Bitcoin is the asset that you want to own. I think it is super special. It is super different than all the other cryptos out there, and this is the place where you want to concentrate wealth. It has the lowest risk for what I believe is a very high reward. Is it going to 100x from here? No, I don't think it's going to 100x. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it could, right? Maybe it could. Um, but I think that ultimately these other protocols like Ethereum and Solana and Cardano and any of these others have, yes, the potential to outperform Bitcoin, but I think that they have exponentially higher risk. And I think for a risk versus reward weighted investment, Bitcoin is probably what you want to own right now. Now, I will tell you that if you want to build a portfolio of 20,000 or sub 20,000 Bitcoin over the course of the next 12, 18, 24 months, you're going to do extremely well long term in my view. And that's my view and my view only. And I'm going to be making decisions based on that thesis that I have. Uh, I do believe that sub 20,000 is deep value. I think 300 week moving average, I'll show it to you one more time. 300 week moving average here at about 16,000 is deep value. I think if we capitulate below that on increasing volume, which could absolutely categorically happen, you know, in that 10, 12, 13,000 range, I believe that is very deep value for Bitcoin. I think at that level, I'm certainly going to want to be backing up the truck and buying as much as I possibly can. Uh, and I think there will be some opportunities. D don't fall into the fallacy, into the trap of thinking that Bitcoin is only going to be at these levels or lower levels for minutes or seconds, okay? If Bitcoin wicks down and it touches 10,000 and it goes right back up to 13,000, if Bitcoin hits 200,000, you're not going to care too much if you bought it at 10,000 or 13,000, okay? Um, so don't let that push you away from being a buyer. Just be cautious. Preserving capital is a number one priority in my opinion. I don't think that you have to spend your last dollar buying Bitcoin at any specific price. I think that you just watch for value opportunities, and I think that we're in a period of time when we are going to be presented with multiple opportunities of extreme value, deep value in Bitcoin, and now is the time to position yourself to accumulate uh, over time, okay? This bear market is not going to end tomorrow. The bear market is not going to end next month. We could see a relief rally that lasts weeks or even months. And ultimately, I still think we go in and make a lower low. That's my own personal opinion. And that's what I'm using to frame my own investment strategy around uh, in Bitcoin. Now, I'm going to get a lot of flack for that. I know a lot of people on crypto Twitter will say it doesn't matter if you buy it at 30000 or 20000 or 60000 You have to buy Bitcoin. I totally disagree with that. My theory is and my thesis is that the value that you enter an investment does matter. It needs to be relative and it needs to be attractive. And I think at this point in time, we are at a relatively attractive place to buy Bitcoin. But I think buying Bitcoin or stacking sats at 10,000, 12,000, 13,000, 15,000 or 16,000 is substantially better than stacking sats at 20,000. Now, why did I buy a Bitcoin at 19,000? I bought one because I might be wrong. Right? I never, I'm never so arrogant. I'm never so committed to my own thoughts and my own ideas that I believe that I am right and there is no alternative outcome. I think when investors get to that place and have that perspective, you're going to be hurting big time. I really believe that that is a very detrimental mindset to have. I believe I could be wrong. My thesis could be wrong. Bitcoin could be wrong. Bitcoin could go to zero. I don't think it will. That's not my thesis, but I'm never going to say never because anything can happen. All right. I've preached enough. I've given you enough information. Now you know where I feel deep value for Bitcoin is. And I think that you can make your own investment decisions. Take this data, take my perspective, put it into your own lens, your own framework, your own situation, and make the best decisions that you know how. As always, thanks for watching. If you like the content, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. 
If you hit that bell, you'll get notifications when I post new videos. Again, I only do these solo videos about once or twice a week. I really try and derive as much value for you as possible through interviewing some of the greatest minds in investing and in Bitcoin far smarter than me. And I hope you enjoy those podcast episodes, many of which I've recorded and many of which are yet to come. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching and listening to the Savant Report. We love interacting with our base, and so if you have questions or comments, we encourage you to leave them below. Don't forget to find us on Twitter, at Jordan Weirs and at Savant Report, and drop me a direct message. I'm always eager to engage with our listeners and our audience and discuss important topics about investing.